This is Module 1, Computed Tomography, Module 1B, Temporal and Spatial Resolution. Motion is the major problem with performing cardiac CT. You can see on the images here that any motion during the examination can change the overall clarity and density of the material. In particular, with respect to cardiac CT, motion blurring can change the size of the vessel, either larger or smaller, can change the CT density, which is essential for the diagnostic ability, and furthermore, clarity of structures. Temporal resolution is extremely important in cardiac CT. This can be defined as the time required to complete an arc of rotation such that adequate photon energy has been received by the detector array and thus enabling reconstruction of an accurate representation of anatomic structures. For multi-detector CT, the lowest temporal resolution requires an arc that includes 180 degrees plus the width of the X-ray fan beam. For multi-detector CT, this is approximately 50 degrees for the fan beam. Thus, the total arc necessary to complete an entire set of images is actually 230 degrees. Now, for general purposes, most people use the 180 uh, situation with respect to determining temporal resolution, and we will use this kind of simplified approach, but appreciate that outside of what's called central temporal resolution, to get an entire arc of an entire set of the body requires 180 degrees plus the width of the fan beam. These are examples of uh, resolution phantoms at different velocities. Over on the far left, this resolution phantom has smaller and smaller holes, and we can resolve nearly all of these very nicely. This is without motion. On uh, the next panel in the upper part, this is the mo motion of the resolution phantom at approximately 20 millimeters per second. This is roughly the peak velocity of the left main and proximal left anterior descending during cardiac imaging. At a 50 millisecond temporal resolution, you can still resolve very nicely each of these individual characteristics. However, at an 800 millisecond, which was typical of four slice cardiac CT scanners, there is a considerable motion blur. On the far right is an example of moving the resolution phantom at 60 millimeters per second. This is roughly the peak velocity of the proximal and mid right coronary artery during a standard cardiac CT examination. At a 50 millisecond temporal resolution, there is clearly some blurring, but we can still define uh, reasonably down to the uh, medium size resolution areas. However, at 800 millisecond temporal resolution, true aliasing of the images comes in. This is very similar to what we see in echocardiography when we switch from blue to red in the Doppler velocity panels and the old fashioned situation where uh, on an old movie you can see that a wagon wheel is moving so fast that it appears to be moving backwards. For cardiac CT, then, we need to get motion-free images, and we need to then set up the imaging into particular phases. Shown here on the lower portion is a, an example of what's called a ballistocardiogram. In the upper part, we're specifically looking at the right coronary. Notice that during a single cardiac cycle, the right coronary artery in this particular position can move as much as five to six diameters during a single cardiac cycle. This is a blow up of the ballistocardiogram and each of these individual uh, vertical lines represents 10% of the cardiac cycle. These are called phases. So they call them zero to 10, 10 to 20, etc. During particular portions of the cardiac cycle, motion or acceleration is generally reduced and it is at these times that we take the opportunity to reconstruct images for cardiac CT. The slower the heart rate, the less motion during the image acquisition, 
But again, the ECG phase of ultimate image reconstruction is incredibly important. In particular, for fast heart rates. Now, for 64 slice scanning, single source uh, imaging, uh, fast could be anywhere between 65 to 70 beats per minute. And systolic imaging tends to be the best uh, situation with respect to motion and acceleration through this particular phase. However, if we can get the heart rate down to 55 or 60 beats per minute for traditional 64 slice CT, then end diastole or more properly called diastasis is a better choice for reconstruction. Here's an example of tomographic imaging reconstruction again using the simplistic idea that we only need 180 degrees of rotation to complete the image. So as we're moving the uh, scanner x-ray source about the patient you can see in the lower portion that we are acquiring data during that particular situation. However we need to have at least 180 degrees of data before we have sufficient information, sufficient photon flux in order to set up uh, an entire image of the desired area. Temporal resolution in this case then would be the rotation speed for 360 degrees of arc, that is in this case 330 milliseconds, divided by 2 for the standard 180 degrees to complete an image using central temporal resolution calculations. So in this particular example, the temporal resolution is 165 milliseconds. Note this is again actually central temporal resolution for the actual time requires completion of the arc that includes also the uh, fan beam width of the x-ray source. All the manufacturers appreciate that the slower the heart rate, the better the quality of the images with respect to uh, motion blurring. They have set up then uh, various techniques called multi-segment reconstruction where one could then acquire data during a particular portion of uh, the phase at heartbeat 1 and then complete the rotation at heartbeat 2. So for example one could get uh, 0 to 90 degrees during heartbeat 1 and then 90 to 180 degrees of data during heartbeat 2 and when you combine the two together with multi-segment reconstruction, you still get 180 degrees of data, but you've improved your temporal resolution. Here's an example of how this might be applied in a particular situation. Again, we have uh, the x-ray source spinning about the patient. Notice in the lower panel that we begin to collect data at a particular phase of the cardiac cycle, in this case diastasis. When we complete that particular set of data, you can see that the image is not quite complete, but we can wait till the next acquisition at approximately the same phase of the cardiac cycle to complete the 180 degrees, and thus we've been able to accomplish an entire set of data. Temporal resolution here then would vary depending upon the application between 83 and 165 milliseconds for two segments. Now the biggest problem here is that the heart rate has to be absolutely stable. And if there is an irregular rhythm or a PVC or a PAC, then this type of segment reconstruction does not work. The best situation is to possibly avoid applications by keeping the heart rate down in the 55 to 60 beats per minute range. Optimal multi-detector CT requires a slow enough heart rate and thus the use of beta blockers is most commonly employed. These are examples of temporal resolution for a variety of scanners currently available on the market from Toshiba, Siemens, Philips, and General Electric. You can see that rotation speed could be as slow as 400 milliseconds and as good as 270 milliseconds. The basic temporal resolution, that is looking again at 180 degrees plus the 50 degrees of fan beam width is given on the column on the right. The next most important situation is not only temporal resolution but spatial resolution. If uh, the heart and coronary arteries 
uh, were arranged in a standard XY plane across your chest, then we can acquire images in incredible resolution with virtually all CT scanners manufactured in the last 20 years because they all have sub-millimeter resolution in the XY plane. And in that particular situation, one would be able to then characterize the coronary vessels and produce very sharp vessel borders. The problem is, is that there is a slice width for each of these tomographic images, and that is essentially uh, the collimation setting or the slice thickness. If the resolution in the XY plane is relatively square, but the resolution in the Z axis, that is the thickness of the slice, is not the same, then as you're rotating the vessel around various axes to try to observe eccentric, concentric plaque, you might then end up with fuzzy vessel borders in particular planes and sharp borders in other planes. I call this the funhouse effect and is very evident when you're looking at non-cubic voxels in terms of evaluations. Here's a better understanding of this. In the XY plane, we have excellent resolution using standard CT well below one millimeter. However, with uh, older multi-detector and with electron beam, there is a Z thickness and it ends up with rectangular voxels. The important innovation now with 64 slice CT is that we can then put the images in X, Y, and Z planes which are isotropic. This comes from uh, the weatherman looking at isobars of pressures which basically look at constant levels of pressure. For isotropic pixels it means that we are actually looking at any direction in the X, Y, or Z or off-axis plane that would have exactly the same dimension. Slice thicknesses vary for particular manufacturers. For the 64 slice scanner from Philips, it's 0.67 down to 0.5 millimeters for the Toshiba 64 slice scanner. Another situation related to spatial resolution is being sure that the body fits inside the scanning circle. The scanning circle is defined by the largest external diameter of which the patient can uh, fit into, that is the donut of the x-ray gantry. It's very important that the patient fit well in, in these areas because if there's a portion of the body outside the scanning circle, the reconstruction al algorithms which think there is only air outside the body will then make mistakes and you will have significant streak artifacts. Now the scanning circle is different than the reconstruction circle. The reconstruction circle allows us to reconstruct either concentric or off-axis smaller and smaller circles within the overall scanning circle. This is called the field of view or the reconstruction field of view. And within each of these fields of view is a 512 by 512 matrix. So pixel size is a function of field of view. For example, for a 512 by 512 matrix at a 35 centimeter field of view, which is commonly used to look at uh, the central portion of the chest, the pixel size, that is the X, Y plane of the tomographic imaging is 0.68 millimeters per pixel. If we can then reconstruct a field of view at 20 centimeters, which would be closer to that used to look at the coronary arteries, we can get a field of view and a pixel size in the X, Y plane down to 0.39 millimeters per pixel. Now many people ask, they said, well, if I can get a 0.4 millimeter pixel at a field of view or reconstruction circle of 20 millimeters, then I ought to be able to get a pixel size as low as 0.2 millimeters at a field of view of 10 millimeters and thus improve my ability to see the coronary artery and the plaque better. However, this is not possible because with each situation in multi-detector CT, there is a physical limitation at which the lowest setting is available for the slice collimator and that is related to the resolution of the actual detector array. So in general, uh, for most situations, the physical limitation is about 0.4 millimeters pixel size 